Hello, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Good Children. Welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you want more of us, don't forget to go to our Patreon at the link in bio. One extra episode per week we release every single Friday. We've done live episodes. We do normal chatting episodes. There are vlog-style episodes. It's what you can't get on the podcast Call it our... Our untucked. Call it our untucked. It's the things that we might not feel comfortable saying on the actual podcast, but we get really spicy there. Seven dollars. See you there. See you there. And for more of us, don't forget to go to Good Children Pod across all all social media platforms. Mm -hmm. I mean, our Instagram, our TikTok, our YouTube, um, all amazing ways to get even more Good Children podcasts. And now time for the episode. I know this day is really hard for you, and I know it's something that you've been thinking about for the past 10 years, and I understand that it's never easy to find the truth out 10 years later. No. Just as hard as if you found out the day after. Yeah. Um, So how are you feeling about about what we're about to dive into? I'm worried. I'm worried about... um... The repercussions it may have on, like, friendships, on personal relationships, on family, like... Mm -hmm. It's just not going to be easy. And it hasn't been since 2013. I appreciate you coming forward today and and, and telling your truth and for us to get to the bottom of this because it's it's never easy to break the news, but I'm happy that we're deciding to break the news before it, it, before any other network. Yeah. Yeah. Good children. Hello and welcome back to a brand new episode of Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on our 22 years of friendship, growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and all of the nostalgia, trauma, and unsolved mysteries that go along with it. Today's (laughs) episode is unlike any other episode. I think that this is how we break into the true crime space. We have been suffering from this crime for what's about to become an officially a decade. And I know what some people might be thinking. Why can't you just forget? Because... An elephant never forgets. An elephant never forgets. It always stomps on. And you can forgive. But you, but you can never forget. forget. And this is a this is a situation that has been keeping me up at night. This has been haunting me for ten years. It is literally the only unsolved mystery of my life. Because when you grow up a good child, and everything is about doing what is right, what is expected from you, when you have that one-off situation that's out of your control, mm-hmm. but you feel blamed for, it will keep you up at night. Two things before we get into it. Air conditioner on, torrential thunderstorm on, three things. Birds on. Birds birds might be off right now only because, because of, the of the torrential storm that's happening, but Jin Jia Ji, happy, happy summer. summer. Okay, so let's just set the scene. Let's set the scene. the scene. And you guys thought that we were just dumbasses who just show up here every week without a plan, without a brain. Guess what? We have notes. We have, we have notes. notes. We actually have a whole chart. A chart. And before we get started, I want to let you know that we are protecting the identities of the members at this party. This was my 17th birthday. Mm-hmm. I am, I was born in 1996, so this was 2013. It was mm-hmm. summer going into senior year. I came in like a wrecking ball. For the listener's context, you, Andrew, had just gotten back from Boy State. Je- I was one month fresh off of the bus from the most traumatic military camp of my life. And it's crazy because it doesn't seem like it affected your personality, your style, or your vibes at all. That's what they say a lot about like uh, manic, crazy people. That sometimes you have an event that happens to you. And you can just move right along. Call me, never mind. Call you who? It was going to get call dark. Call you who? I can't even go there. Okay. Um... I was going to say call me Casey Anthony. 
It is also, this is still the summer, me and Andrew are work, we're, we're maintenance workers at the ice rink, if yes. you recall that episode. Yeah. So we're it's pickers. kind of a loaded summer for us. We're going into our senior year of high school. We're about to step away from everything we've ever known. Emotions are probably at the highest they've ever been. Yeah. Lives. We're like, you're turning 17 or I'm already 17. So like, shit's getting real. I'm supposed to be taking my road test and just never took it. Exactly, exactly. You were dealing with things mentally that were obstructing for My vision you. dysfunction was stopping me from taking a road test. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sick to my stomach. I'm saying, what college am I going to? Right. Which I think I feel, I must feel at this point, but it's not the biggest issue for me. No. My biggest issue is how do I make sure my, my Catholic school friends are jealous of my public school friends? Yes. So we land on my birthday party mm. for some reason this was the summer that royal was being born he was being gestated it was a creative process and and this was a time in my life where i was obsessed with this going faceless remember going faceless what do you mean me and jill would always be doing this we'd be like let's go faceless this summer let's not post a picture let's not show anyone where we are and let's come back at the end of the summer and be hotter and be better and be ready to go so be like, okay, it was a faceless, faceless spring. summer. It was like, I was like, I'm not going to post, I'm not going to be public facing. And then like, I'm going to come back and have like a whole new group of friends and be so skinny and hot and like shock everyone. And that was always the goal for me. And that went on until like, I would say mid college. I'd be like, let me shock everyone. It always, I think with you is there always was a shock factor, a shock element to it. It was always a, you're thinking about what other people are thinking. You want to either make them jealous or you want... You want to bring emotion to other people, whether that's jealousy. I'm a storyteller. Shocking. You're a storyteller. Storyteller. You're a storyteller. Um, no, at that point, I will say, I think I was deeply, I was a deeply hurt 17 year old who did want to make people jealous. I think I was like really you upset with my life. almost an emotional curator, one could say. That's a great way to put it. When that's you put a great it way that to put way. manipulation. Yes. When you put it in emotional curation. I was big on Tumblr at this point. It was the biggest avenue. And if you can see what the pictures that are going to be in this episode, you'll you'll see Tumblr's influence on just about every guest at mm-hmm. this party, including Andrew and his gay mint Aztec shirt. Boy, I can see your body moving. Don't, don't really know what I'm Okay, I never thought that the shirt was gay. Everyone else did. But everyone else must have thought it was gay. And like, I don't know if gay was even being used. Was it being used to describe the shirt? I feel like it was being said to it my face. It was the gay mint Aztec shirt. It was the and gay mint Aztec. I was, was a the GMA. huge fan of the Aztec wear. Well, yeah, problematically so. Like, problematically Pac's so. Sun and Urban Outfitters were dominating the culture. We were wearing like tribal print and Aztec every day. I was like, I love this cute pattern. <laughs> um, I remember, I think that you bought that at PacSun. Oh, I did. I, I anything I was, I was wearing at the you. time was PacSun. We were, because you know who did that? Kendall and Kylie. Kendall and Kylie had their PacSun line and they made PacSun like really fucking chic. And it was like, oh, if you want to be cool, you have to go to PacSun. Yeah, of course. And to this day, sometimes I'm like, I miss PacSun. I miss, I used to walk into PacSun. I would either get a t-shirt. Some of their button, button downs, downs were so yeah. cute. So cute. And you always knew that you could go to PacSun too if you were looking for a middle of the line flip flop. <laughs> You actually could start a course, a college course, on how to get the best flip flop for your buck. Yeah, I could for your buck. Like yeah. you know a thong. I. Uh, one thing about me, I know a little strip between your toes. I know thongs better than the back of my hand. Is that the saying? Okay, so it's 2013. It's uh, what's going on. Like we can't stop is the most important song in the entire world. We can't stop is dominating the charts. Everybody is singing it. We're weeks away from the VMAs, the Miley twerking VMAs. And even though it was weeks away, everybody was twerking. My birthday cake from my parents said, "Happy birthday, twerking Joe, twerking Joe." I mean, there is something about that. That, like, I don't want to say the G word, but... Day? Yeah, but they basically said it for you. So, again, it's that time in pop culture. Um, I remember also going to Pakistan. I bought... It was, like, the beginning of, like, when Hawaiian shirts became, like, ironic and cool. It was, like, mm. that time of year of life. And I was wearing a matching short. And I remember just thinking, I look so good. Yeah. Being like, this is like one of the, fir- it was one of the first times actually 
where I was like, this is an outfit I'm happy with, mm. which is shocking. You also loved the Ray-Bans. They were so in. Those Ray-Bans, they were knockoffs. Yeah, they were very in. Ray-Bans were so in, and you know what? I'll say it, Sperry's. It was a Sperry summer. It was a triple S. A stinking Sperry summer. And I was wearing Tom's. Oh, I, okay, I have a question. <laughs> I do have a question about a Tom since I've never put one of those on my on my feet. Why? Which is so interesting. Don't you think I would love? I feel like you're gonna start wearing Toms. I feel like they're probably so light and airy. They are light and airy, but they do stink. If that's what you were gonna ask. It wasn't even stinking. Another S word. Are you sliding? Was the sweat on the sole slippery and slidey? Like when you're walking around. Fuck, are you saying? If you sometimes. were, if your feet were sweating, if your feet were sweating in the tom, right? You're walking around in these toms. Are you not sloshing around in that shoe no, because it's of like foot? gripping your foot? I think I, my foot doesn't have good grip. Those are grippers. Are you kidding me? But sometimes when my bottom of my feet sweat and I'm walking on a flip flop. They're sl- they're sliding around. It's not the around. same though because there's edges. Your like whole foot is wrapped by the tom. It's not like a flip flop. It's almost like a mummy shoe. It is. It's essentially. I mean, it's like a shoe. Some could say you slip your foot into something. It's like a slide-on shoe. Okay. But none of this is why we're here. We're here to solve an unsolved crime. Yep. So there we are. August 12th, 2013. Ten days after my birthday. I'm hosting this party. It is about, I would say, ten kids who have known most of them since at least sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Some of them since kindergarten. Um, at this point, slowly becoming my closest friends because, again, I was trying to abandon my friends from my actual school. The party is, it's simple, it's easy. There's a cup song, there's a cup song performance because it's 2013 and how can you not have that happen? How can you not have a group of 17-year-olds gather around a table <laughs> with red solo cups at playing the cup song? For some reason, the solo cups were pink. For some reason, the solo cups were pink. And we'll just leave it there, folks. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a cups performance. Obviously, we're all gagging. I'm sure Andrew was like, it should be me performing, but it was my cousin I felt, I felt it in my stomach. I, I remember the feeling. I you felt it like, in my stomach that I was like, I actually know every single word to the song, and so does why everybody am I else, not but doing like, I know it. that I can do it. But we're going to have... We're going to have... I said Taylor's name already. We're going to have Taylor do it. But the party, like all of my backyard parties, was reasonably pretty tame, you know? We would we would listen to music, we would dance around. Someone gets pushed in the pool. There's pizza. There's a lot of cans of of, of like iced tea and sodas. There's always the because you had a summer birthday, so like there was always the intention to go in the pool. No one ever did. Yes, it needed to be pushed in the pool. It was a whole gag. But also your party, you did amazing jobs with entertaining people by having snacks, by having Mm -hmm. every single category of soft drink that you can imagine. Yes. You were hitting all, going through all the stops, pulling them all out. Yes. Always. 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 Um, And that was the case for this party as well. I have a question. Yes. Did you take part in planning these events? Like, were you the one that was picking out the soft soft drinks? Yeah, I would go to Costco with my mom. And you would say, we need a little bit of this. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Ah! (laughs) Actually, I, are you okay? (sighs) So, it's a pretty tame night, you know. There's chips, there's dips. I'm sure there's an onion, an onion dip. I'm of sure there's an onion dip. There is singing, there's dancing. There's about four thousand images taken on my DSLR. Every single picture, every single angle, every single filter is being used. Yes, and this was like major black and white vibes, like Tumblr aesthetic blog vibes. And the thing about my party is, is like my mom was kind of like an ever present force within them like it wasn't like there was much time of like true rowdiness to true opportunity to be that nuts like it was a pretty policed state i wouldn't want to call your mother big brother but big if mother I, if it was big mother peering through the windows yes. that's what she was doing and, exactly and your big sister was also there was almost worse yeah amanda was worse oh, amanda always. was the cops Always. She was trying to bust someone. But that night, she must have been off duty. Because the next morning, I wake up 
there's a knock at my front door. And if there's a knock at front Joe's front door, normally it ends up in... Everyone's hiding. Everyone's hiding, face plant to the floor, yes. lights off, no one's home. Not this day. Because my mom said, that that looks like, say, Lori from the, the house behind us. What could she be doing here? She answers the door for Lori. Lori says, hi, did you have a party last night? Which... If you were presented with that question, immediately stomach stomach sank. A double S. A double S. A sinking yeah. stomach. A sinking stomach. I was like, yeah, I did. My son had a 17th birthday party. Why? I found about a dozen beer cans tossed over the fence in my backyard. Not one, not two, but a, a dozen? dozen? A dozen beer cans? tossed over the fence in Lori's backyard. I'm sorry, Lori. I'm sorry, Lori. I'm honestly sorry more to myself because what ensued was uh, accusations equivalent to the Salem Witch Trials. Yes. Like, my mother, who was basically there being like, well, it had to have been your party. It had to be someone you know. Like, who was it? Let's get to the bottom of this. And we never got to the bottom of it. The bottoms were never figured out. And, well, well, a few bottoms have come out since. (laughs) But I will say, we did get to the bottom of this story. And today is the day... That we investigate. That we investigate. Who underage drank at my 17th birthday party. Mm -hmm. We have a few suspects. We have a few people in mind. And I had a few suspects then, and they pretty much reigned true for the past decade. What I did was start going through the pictures and seeing who had a bag on them. Because to bring in 12 beer cans, you had to have smuggled them in in a pretty pretty obvious way. You but can't you really were hide telling that. me they weren't all of the same brand. They were all different beers, which is me someone had to have raided like their parents' fridge. You know, yes. you take one of each so they don't notice. Yes. Like that was the vibe. It was like three Bud Lights, like one Budweiser, like whatever other I don't know beers um but you know what I mean I know exactly what you mean so very similar to my parents fridge so yeah you have to question at that point who brought something in and then who is most likely to have been underage drinking there were a few people that were invited to this party that I think that could have brought some of the alcoholic beverages some of these um non-welcomed substances yeah these illicit substances these illicit substances some some could say who would you say? I mean, I've been thinking it's Malika since day one. Since 2013. Since 2013. And sometimes, and what it's really, Why? what's really interesting about this is sometimes you need to close a case to then reopen it. Because you know what you gotta look at it with fresh eyes. Fresh eyes, again, a lot of things are happening on Long Island at this time. We're past a few of the murderers from the Long Island murderer himself. The Gilgo Beach I killer. do believe that the Gilgo Beach killer was just found and we're going to find the next person today. So again, why did I think it's Malika? Why Malika? So Malika has had, I think, other situations, or Malika is friends with people who I believe drink. Malika was a quote-unquote bad kid. I think Malika was more of a bad, not even a bad kid, but like a kid who was like willing to have a little bit of fun and drink. Right. And at the time, we saw that as bad. We were right. like, oh, yeah, no, yes, yeah. You're bad. You're a you're a rule breaker. And I just felt like for her to have fun, she needed to drink. She needed to drink because that was a big one. It's like I don't need to drink to have fun. Exactly. And she needed to drink to have fun. Yes. Our secondary suspect would be Rob. Rob. Rob is a suspect for one reason and one reason alone. And it's that Rob brought a backpack. A black Jansport backpack to the party. Why hmm. are you bringing a backpack to the party? And if you weren't going to be going in the pool, it Why wasn't for you? your bathing suit. Yeah, so what was in that backpack, Rob? So I asked hmm. him. I asked him the next day. I said, my neighbor just showed up yielding a dozen beer cans and is accusing me of underage drinking at my house. Care to explain? I said, you brought a backpack. My mom is really gr- grilling me on this. She didn't really care. I cared. What was in your backpack? It's so good. 
that your mom really didn't care. She was like, I want to know who it was, but she wasn't like, find out, like you're yeah. in trouble. She was like, I wonder who it could have been. But it's something within us that we were like, because oh, again, you felt wrong. I was like, I do everything right. You know, quote yes. unquote. I do everything right. And now I'm getting in trouble. Now, like, I, someone now thinks I wrote a rule. My neighbor like, thinks that I'm a degenerate. Yeah. An alcoholic degenerate. A 17 year old. That doesn't want a job. Right. Exactly. I'm like, I work. <laughs> I work at the ice rink. Yeah. You know, like, I'm putting it, I'm, I'm an upstanding citizen of Lana Del Rey's United States of, of America. Course. Of course. And now here I am being accused of doing something illegal in my I'm own like, backyard. That's insane. I might be twerking Joe, but I'm not drinking Joe. No, I mean, like, there was a cup song being done. You know what I mean? The cups were being used to perform. They weren't yeah. being used to underage. And me. listen, Lori heard it, too. Lori heard the cup she song. She said, I am going to plant these beer cans right here because I don't want to deal with this ever again. Yep. Rob is like, well, first of all, I have anxiety. And in 2013, when someone had anxiety, it's not the same way that people have anxiety now, where no. it's just like everyone's dog has anxiety, you know, like... When you're saying you have anxiety in 2013, you might as well be like, I'm severely struggling with my mental health and I'm not doing well. I'm yeah. like, whoa. Whoa. Yeah. I'm already sorry. You use the A word you. and you're like, I am actually so sorry. Yeah. So he's like, I have anxiety and I in my backpack was a reusable water bottle and like some other things I have to like have just in case of emergency. Hmm. Like hmm. Advil. Mm, I think that beer could sometimes ease anxieties. I think beer could really ease anxiety. That's you're, really you seem to think it's Rob. So I know that you're going back and forth now because Malika and Rob. But the only reason I think it's Rob is because Rob was... If you think about Rob this way, Rob was friends with a lot of the girls at this party. I don't remember that being the case. But in high school... Rob was friends with the Kendalls, with the Kylies, with with the Courtneys, with the Chloes. Rob was. Was he friends with Chloe? Rob was friends with Chloe. This is what I'm saying to you. I know who Chloe is, and Chloe was friendly with Rob. Okay. So, but if Rob was to say, I'm gonna trust bring a dozen me, beers. I have beer. Chloe's not gonna turn it down. You know what I mean? Chloe's gonna go with the flow, and Chloe's gonna say, "Yeah." Although Chloe knows you and your family. That's the that's the other side of this, and that's where I want to defend Malika. Malika also knows the family very well. I can't imagine a world where Malika would be willing to. Bring, I I did feel this as, as a kid too. I think this person had to have been slightly more tertiary than a Malika than a Chloe hmm. because they were deeply involved in the family unit at times like I don't think that they knowing my family would have risked getting found out okay Do you know I think it's someone who didn't know my family as well okay see I'm almost ready to say Malika didn't give a fuck Malika didn't give a fuck Malika was like because I think in that case she's probably like Who's this loser freak? Like, people are drinking. It's like legitimately whatever. So like, if I got found that I was drinking, my mom doesn't care. You know what I mean? What if that was Malika's perspective? Don't, isn't it crazy how like, I was just having this conversation with my mom. I was like, why was underage drinking such a big deal to you when you, when, when you were my age? Like, they were able to drink at 18. You know what I mean? Like, drink, the drinking age was literally 18 when my, yeah. my parents were, like, our age at that time. So I'm like, why was it such... It was, like, literally the worst thing you could do was underage drinking this, in my house. Like, that was the worst thing I could be on doing. Why? Why? My kids are going to be able to drink when they're seven. Our two suspects right now are Malika, Malika and, and Rob. Rob. Rob has an alibi. Do we buy the alibi? That Rob has anxiety, and only, the only thing in that Jansport backpack was life survival supplies. I don't believe it. You think Rob brought beer? I think that there is a. I'm keeping You're it a cons- open. A conspiracy here that you think Malika and Rob are working together in this I situation. Wouldn't put it past them, and I do believe that Rob. I don't know. I want to believe Rob. I want to believe Rob. I want to bring all these people back into the backyard this summer. And Rob was looking cute. Rob I'll was say looking it. cute, and that's the reason why he's a suspect because you can't trust the cute ones. No, you can't. Our final suspect. There's three here. So we have Malika, Rob, and here's the outlier, which is Kim. Kim is someone who I think is the most likely target. The mo- and but however, with no evidence. Kim showed up looking zooted. Zooted. High as 
hell. I could almost say that Kim might have been drinking. Kim might have been pre-gaming the party. That was the other. Well, that was my mom's theory at the time. Was like maybe someone was just trying to get rid of the beer cans they already had on them. Because she was like, if you didn't see them drinking there, maybe they were already drinking and didn't want to get rid of them at their house. So they got rid of them there. Oh, But Joe. I'm like, if you're trying to get rid of beer cans, put them in the recycling can. Like, why would you be tossing them over the fence then? Because there is this idea maybe they would think that like, you would see them in the recycling can and say, whose beers are right. those? Yeah. That's not a bad idea because I'm really finding it hard. And I, I want to know if the listeners are as well. I'm finding it hard to believe that people could drink could get beer away with this. and get away with it because, one, beer doesn't smell good. You know the smell of beer. It's on your breath. It's in the air. It's all encompassing. You're not wrong about that. You're not. That's something worth noting. I'll say if there's a few factors where maybe you wouldn't smell the beer. We were at a pool. Chlorine. Chlorine. It was buggy out off bug spray mm. it was buggy out citronella candles are lit citronellas so there was who a lot was of- sitting by the citronellas. citronellas but the reason that kim is a difficult case to make is because we really have no proof we have no evidence we have malika also had a bag kim rob had a bag kim did not have a bag we're just judging kim based off of their character we're profiling kim because of former offenses and that's where it's like we can't necessarily throw kim that deeply into the ring However, a record sometimes, you know... Speaks louder than words. Correlation sometimes does equal causation. Yep. Speaks louder than 12 cans. Speaks louder than 12 cans. I will say, I do have reason to believe that Rob may not be the villain we think he is. You have chills. I I just got goosebumps. You got goosebumps. I don't know why. I don't know why. Because it's getting so serious in here. (laughs) This was 2013. We've been over it. What was going on in 2013, Andrew? Vine. Vine was happening in 2013. Everyone wanted to be a Vine star. Because again, like if you're gonna be famous on any of these platforms, you wish it was Vine. Six seconds. Easy one. Easy Easy one one to be like, what the heck? That's that was three seconds. Done. Done. It is crazy. Like literally, some things that would go viral would just be someone like saying something really loud. Yeah. It's insane. We have a lot of vines in the back end. We have a Mainly lot. Mainly, it was like videos I was taking of you. And yes, a lot of videos of me for Vine, a lot of like clipped together pieces, twerking, dancing, whatever. Yeah. Vine was also like, Vine was just kind of like a space that you could find like cute boys. I didn't experience this. Who the fuck are you going to talk about? It's like NG and Who? CD. Um, Nash Greer Andrew and Cameron Dallas no it's like offensive to even say their names on this podcast I just like there <sighs> was something about them like about Nash Greer I'm into I am recognizing like I'm into teeth I'm into the way that they look he had a great smile and I thought he was cute I don't know I loved like a skinny straight boy there was something about them they were like fun too they had good personalities a skinny straight boy Sorry, sorry, I don't know. Maybe I want to crush them. I'm sorry. Um, I can't even imagine a world where I like, had a crush on one of the mag convoys. That was not for me. Mm. I didn't really understand You didn't it. like a Sean Mendez? No, and I was still don't. Was he a part of the group? Yeah, he was part of MagCon. It was Sean, Cameron, Nash, and the rest of them I assume just like didn't make it. Yeah. Oh. Rest in peace. May they rest. Um, but yeah, that they just like went around the country and just like toured, just doing nothing. What do you mean? They're <laughs> wait, we're kind of like this generation. No, they weren't. They didn't like perform anything. They didn't like do it. They just like literally they just, like, said hey to people. They were like hey, what's up? And they did like picture meet and greet con, night con. It was just a meet and greet. Wow. Yeah. They kind of had it made since the beginning. They did. From Vine. From Vine. From doing six seconds of, I have no idea what they were doing on Vine. And becoming like sensations. Sensations. It must be one of the most agonizing, depressing, torturous, dehumanizing, humiliating, pathetic careers you could ever have. Well, because you have to recognize like that, that all they could possibly think that they had was that they were hot. Yeah. And they were, they were like hot and young, which is like creepy. Yeah. But Rob's alibi 
is that at one point during the party, I lost sight of what was happening outside because I was inside with you, with Courtney, with, I want to say, Chloe. No, with Kendall, with Kylie, and with Rob. Because we were inside recreating. What do you want for a healthy snack, Rebecca? I want Chipotle. I said a healthy, healthy snack, Rebecca! Rebecca! What do you want for a healthy snack, Rebecca? I want Chipotle. I said a healthy snack, Rebecca! Remember so, that? Oh, I remember that. That remember was that, that was that all just the rage. Did take you back in a scary way? That was all the rage that everyone was doing that impression. I want Chipotle. I want Chipotle. And it's and crazy. I also like Chipotle is my life. Was oh that my then? God, I love Chipotle. Oh my. Chipotle is my life. The thunder. I wish we were doing like a scary stories episode. Same. It's kind of a scary story. So you, what you're saying to everybody is that Kim and Malika were ba in the backyard. They were left unattended in the backyard. Kim and Malika. And okay. I'm not saying anything by saying that. I'm not saying anything. But I am saying it's suspicious. And everyone knows that when Kim and Malika are together, nothing good happens. Were they friendly? They, they were friendly in a way that, like, they both knew that they could, like... They both were a little bit of rule breakers. Yes. I never saw Malika as a rule breaker until this night. Interesting. I, I think that, that since this her. night, Malika has had a shift in perspective in your mind. Yes. Yeah. Things changed. Yeah. Because I was like, because I think that honestly, I remember texting you and I remember you rather a few people out. You were like, it must have been Malika. Like almost immediately. You were like, it had to have been Malika. And to this day, everyone thinks it's Malika. It's just like, but I feel like Malika would come clean and as an adult. I think that once this episode airs and Malika listens, because Malika again, will know that to anybody about? involved, there's no Nobody, will. No, and in fact, I I actually respect you at this point. Like, I want to know who it was. Yeah. One more suspect that I've actually been keeping to myself this entire time, and I would say it's the suspect with the most evidence against them. It's the person who has the most odds stacked against them out of every guest at the party and it's all recorded on camera and it's andrew muscarella i can't even believe that you think because i funnel the four logo once before this event that i would have the capabilities of bringing beers i'm not into saying your you brought backyard them. i'm not saying you brought them but you're saying i drank i'm them. saying you drank them because interesting there are about four dozen images of Andrew looking completely shit-faced in this backyard. More than anyone else does. More than anyone else does. Andrew is twerking on a man. Andrew is riding a woman. Andrew is knees on the yeah. ground, crouching, eyes I'm doing closed, a lyrical routine. looking blacked out, lyrical routine, leg up in the air, spinning, sitting, sliding, sucking, sipping. Was I? Were you? I guess we'll never. No, know. we're gonna find out. I want to hear your perspective on this evening. What do you actually remember from August thirteenth, twenty thirteen? What if I said I don't remember much? Are you gonna say that I was well, blackout that's drunk? A side effect of alcohol. Okay, Joe. Well, I remember from that that night. I was just there having an amazing time. <laughs> and there's a difference between being drunk and high on sugar, because I was drinking cokes. I was eating cookies. I was having chips. Like, you couldn't cross me with a beer. And if I was to drink beer... You would throw up. <laughs> I would, one, throw up, and you would see it on my face. Still to this day, I sip a beer, and I'm like, oh. So you would know. You would know. So who do you think... Give me the realistic, what do you think was happening? If there was... If I was to be... If someone was to come up to me right now gun and say... Gun to your head. Gun to my head. You're about to on, die. On August 13th, 2013. I would say Malik is the one that brought the alcohol. Kim is the one that then decided to dispose of the alcoholic beverages. Kim was the one that was drinking the most. But Malika, I don't think she wanted her hands dirty. I think Kim was willing to get her hands dirty that night. And you know what? It was easy to pin it on Rob because Rob has anxiety. But what we learn about Rob is that 
Rob wasn't gonna do that. He was sick to his stomach. Another little gay boy was not gonna be doing that. So I think Malika is the one that brought them, but I think again, Kim is the one that drank the most and disposed of. Here's what about you? What about you? I don't, the gun should not be pointed at me. This was my party. I'm a victim. You're I'm right. I'm a victim. You're here. so right. Anything, listen. Well, I'll just say, I was just, I was just accused. I was just accused to the world, to the entire nation. Well, look at the evidence. Look at the pictures. And you tell me if you look like a sober person. You know what? Do I look like a sober person? No. 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 I don't, but the thing is, sometimes I just like to have a little bit of fun. I think you're making a really good point about the collaboration between Kim and um, Malika. Malika here, because I do see a world where only Kim would think to throw the cans over the fence. Only Kim would have that mindset. Mm -hmm. There's no, and I don't think there's a world where Kim would dare show up with it. Yep. I think there's a world knowing Kim's family, knowing how Kim truly had a layer of respect around this household. I don't think Kim would have came out, came here with the intention to break a rule. But I do think if the opportunity was presented to Kim, they couldn't help themselves. Because we know a thing or two about Kim. Kim is always, always willing to push the confines of law. To yes. go against the law, Forever. to break the For rules, as long as to no steal can. the things, yes. to drink the things. Yes. Come so on. who would you say anyone else was involved? Can you use their actual names? I'm just going to believe them out at this point yeah. of who else would have been involved. I cannot picture being involved in this situation. Do uh, I know that she was originally was a suspect number one? Yeah, I think you that she told was a me. Drinker. You said drinks. So drinks. she was on the suspect list as well. But I don't think <laughs> drinks beer. That's that's what she said. Oh my god, that was part of it. That was everyone's excuse. I texted <laughs> and she was like, "I would never do that. I don't drink beer." Yep. And that's also what <laughs> said. Yep. I don't drink beer. Yep. I don't think that they drink beer. But Kim, Kim drinks beer. Kim drinks beer. Kim drinks beer. Malika drinks beer. beer. But you know what? Chloe drinks beer. Chloe drinks beer. And Chloe and Kim are tight. tight. So you're saying and that might be our trio? Our trio, it's Kim, Chloe. And it's Malika. Kim, Chloe, and Malika. But did you text Chloe? I texted Chloe and I haven't heard back from Chloe yet. So there's a world where when this episode ends, we get an answer as to who it was. Do you think it was the three of them, four beers each? I think it's the three of them, four beers each, yeah. I think that it could have been like... A little... A little pregame before the situation and less beers drank at the party. And they just disposed. Yeah, and when we were inside. Yes. Of yes. course. We went inside, we're recreating a vine. They're like quick over the over the fence. Yes. And little did they know. Little did they know Lori would come over That's and sad. she'd be a knocking on that door. Like Lori, like fuck Lori. Like fuck I'm sorry, Lori. but literally and I will stand by it. Like you're a fucking narc in an annoying way. Like, I do think littering is wrong, and I think there could have been a much easier way to get rid of that alcohol. But if the kids were drinking, the kids were drinking, and no one got hurt, and no one got in trouble, and it was like, everyone had a good night, but you know what Lori wanted to do? Ruin the night. No, Lori wanted to ruin my entire 17th year. Lori because wanted to get me in trouble? Grow up. Grow up, Lori. Like, Lori, like, actually- 12 fuck cans you. I'm glad you on moved your away. grass? Sweep them up, <laughs> bitch. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Like, this has all come down on Lori. Like, so I guess we'll never. I guess the worst part of this story is that we'll never know who underage drank at my 17th we'll birthday party. We'll never know unless someone texted you. Unless I got that text message. It sucks we were we didn't come on this episode and talk about what everybody's been wondering about us what is like you know what i mean you know what yeah this is a new thing that andrew's introducing and it's just it's we can't even talk about it we can't because it's just actually so heinous i'm planting seeds in people's minds you're like i need new drama and i guess we may not ever know that but we know one thing 
and so we'll always have our listeners. Good, Good children, children to the, the guidance, guidance office. Hey, Andrew and Joe, it's Maddie. I am calling to ask, how do you move beyond work besties to a flirty fling? If either of you have experience in this, I need your God-given advice. If not, take your best guess. Also, just wanted to say that I have been listening to you guys for over a year, and you have helped me through so much. You have no idea. Um, So thank you for everything, and please keep this pod going. Okay. Love you. Bye. Maddie, just for you, we'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. Do you think we're still helping people? (laughs) <laughs> I actually am like wondering that like <clears throat> I think by slaying and living out loud we're always going to help someone I think by just showing up people are like oh they, they're still alive yes they're resilient yeah they're resilient um, right how do you go beyond work besties into something flirty I'll tell you one thing I wanted to get into something flirty with one of my work my work sees my like EFCs recent? oh okay and didn't work out for and you and didn't work out for why? me why because I it was like one of the first gay men that I was introduced to and I was genuinely like, I want to date this person because I like their personality. But then I would see them around the office and like crush and then we got to be really close and be friends and I was like, it's not going to work. Um, it's tough. It's like really tough. Why would you want to date a coworker? It's just difficult. Mm-hmm. You know, that's my opinion. Is like I would almost say don't do it. You're going to see them every single day and if that's fine with you, that's fine by you. But... You have the, there's an opportunity that's going to get uncomfortable if you were to talk about how you're actually feeling. But if you know that that feeling's not going to go away and you, and they could be the one that got away, I'm, I'm team say something. If you see something, say something. I'm going to leave it at that. And we'll leave it at that, Maddie. If you want to go up to them and say like, Hey, listen, like, do you want to grab a drink maybe one day? And if they say, sure. And then you feel out the vibes and it's not right. Don't pursue. Oh, oh my, god. my god. And just like that, I kind of want to get into more true crime. Yeah. Situations. It'd be fun if we had like more evidence and more claims and like. And just like that, it's over. And if I find out who it was. It'll be on Patreon. It'll be on Patreon. And we'll let you know. I hope to God you found I, out. Me I too. Hope, I can't wait to see your phone. I know. But until then. We'll see you next week for an all new episode. Thank you so much for tuning in and don't forget to do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, write a review. Write a review. Write a review. Five stars, please. Make it sweet. Because the two, two stars, I can't take it any longer. You. We had some reviews come in. I checked on the way here because I was I, mean, I was afraid. Like I looked at them. Like sometimes, like when I don't want to look at my phone because I'm afraid someone's going to be mean to me. I'm nervous. That, I like look like this. What happened? And they were all five stars. And they were okay. all very nice. People were like, "Boy State best episode ever." Like it was it was very nice. But okay. I literally looked at them like that, like trying so hard not to. Look we're at my so phone. sick. <laughs> we really are so. It's we strive. Like, I open an email. I'm like we're like striving for perfection. We're like sick out of the head. If there's oh, well, I was like stars. I don't want to see a mean review and then have to record. Like I was like it'll fuck up my whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know you know where to find us. Too. On across all platforms at, at Good Children Pod. At Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella and TikTok at Andrew underscore Musky. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges and on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. Which you can't seem to be. I'm so sorry. We hunt our honeys down. We take them into town. Start washing all our worries down the drain. Rain is a good thing.